valves are the critical anatomical structures that prevent blood from going backwards. For whatever reason, our blood flows from atria to ventricles to somewhere to atria to ventricles to somewhere to atria to ventricles to somewhere, and it goes in that order, and it has to go in that order. Like, it, it flows in a direction, and if the blood flowed back and forth, we really couldn't ever clean it, and we, like, wholly inefficient, bad idea. Let's not do it. Let's employ some valves. There are three types of valves I want to talk about, and only two of them are found in the heart. So who are they? The first valves you're going to look at ugh, are, oh, geez, did I really, like, what was that? Nobody knows. The first valves I want to look at are called AV valves. AV valves are also known as atrioventricular valves, and atrioventricular valves are between the atrium and the ventricle. Done. And yes, you can call them AV valves if you would like. I wonder if that's standard or if you have to spell it out in most classes. If my AV valves are between, I'm going to color my AV valve in yellow. Here's my atrium. Here's my ventricle. That means that this is my right AV valve. And the right AV valve is also called the tricuspid valve. So if you hear tricuspid, it's the right AV valve that they're talking about. Guess who this guy is over here? Between the left atrium and the left ventricle, that is the left AV valve. Let's just do that right and left. The left AV valve doesn't just have one additional name, bicuspid. It has two additional names. It's also called the mitral valve. So the mitral valve and the um, mitral, bicuspid, or tricuspid, or right and left AV valves, whatever you prefer. Isn't that fun? Choose your own adventure. Okay, here's the other interesting thing about my AV valves. I'm going to draw them in here because they aren't actually drawn in. You have these amazing connective tissue, like crazy strong cords that connect your floppy little valves to the walls of the ventricles. And this is only, they're only found in our AV valves, and they're called chordae tendinae. Chordae tendinae. The chordae tendinae are attached to like little bumpy muscle projections of this, this, these are cardiac muscle. And they're called papillary muscles. And they help hold, you can imagine, I mean, the, the vein, the valves are floppy. Like they're, they're almost like folds of endothelium, and they've definitely been reinforced by some kind of super strong connective tissue because they're unbelievable structures. But, if you didn't have them, if you didn't have the chordae tendinae attached to these things, they would flap backwards because they're just kind of a little too floppy. And so the papillary muscles and the chordae tendinae hold onto and anchor the AV valves. Do semilunar valves have chordae tendinae and papillary muscles attached to them? No, 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 except I haven't even told you what semilunar valves are yet. Oh, I'm getting super ahead of myself, which is always fun, especially when there's nobody here to say, slow your roll, doggy. Semilunar valves. Semilunar valves. Okay, I'll put them right here. Semilunar valves are my valves that are preventing backflow from the ventricles out to wherever we're going. So, 
and they're not called right and left, but they're just as easy because if this is a semilunar valve, so I'm going to point my little arrow here and go semilunar valve, and no, you cannot abbreviate the semilunar valves, sorry. What vessel is this giant, tall, tree-like vessel coming out of the right ventricle? That's the pulmonary trunk. So guess what kind of semilunar valve that is? It's the pulmonary semilunar. That says pulmonary. Pulmonary semilunar valve. Here's another semilunar valve, except this one is attached or preventing backflow from the ascending aorta, which means it is the aortic semilunar valve. Okay. Those are my semilunars. I have to tell you this part because I think it's so cool. Did I already tell you this? Why aren't you answering me? Just kidding. I know that you're not really there. It is late in the evening, though. Okay, this is the coolest thing about valves. Go ahead and, like, listen to your heart. You can totally hear your heart beating, right? Lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. Guess what? The lub comes from your AV valves. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, geez. Lub. Your AV valves snap shut and you hear lub. And the dub or dup comes from the snapping shut of the semilunar valves. What? That's crazy talk. And when you look at them, you'll be like, uh-uh, not possible. Sorry, there's no snapping of those little floppy pieces of floppiness, but it's true. They make your heart sounds. So a heart murmur is when the valves don't snap all the way shut and a little bit of blood creeps through and you can hear it. Instead of hearing dup, you hear shh, lub shh, shh dup. I can't hear it for anything to save my life, but you guys someday will be listening to heart sounds and you will be able to hear it. I said there were three types of valves, and I'm going to give you a hint, and I'm going to put my third type in this color. Hint, hint. We actually have valves in our veins, and the valves in your veins are very similar to the semilunar valves in that they don't have chordae tendinae, they don't have papillary muscles attaching them, but they're just these little flaps that however they structure, they prevent backflow of blood in your veins. If your venous valves start to get floppy or break down, you can get varicose veins. Varicose veins are just kind of blown out and expanded um, vessels, veins, <laughs> because the valves in your veins aren't working. Okay, now you have all the valves that you've ever wanted to have. You know everything you want to know about the heart. We're going to, like, play with fresh and preserved hearts in lab, and it's been a great day, and I will talk to you all later.